I've played golf since before I could remember. It was a fun pastime for me, a chance to get outside, spend time with my dad, and to wind down. About a year ago, I started taking golf more seriously. I took lessons, I joined my school's golf team, I trained hard, and I went to the course all the time. Before it was a hobby, and now it's a passion, and I love it. It's so nice to go to the range because you can relax. The competitions are just as fun. They may be stressful, but I enjoy being able to see other people who love the game of golf just as much as I do. Whenever I go to the course, it's a time for me to let go of all the worry, stress, and anxiety that's produced from school and other things. My favorite part of the game is being able to start most every hole in my driver and just being able to hit it as hard as I can. And it's therapeutic for me to just let everything go. Golf is something I love and it's something I enjoy, but I can't help notice that it's a male-dominated sport. Whenever I go to the course, I'm surrounded by men and it makes me feel like an outsider. Often, there's very few women around and it makes me feel as though there just isn't a place for girls in golf. And the numbers support this because males outnumber females four to one. Historically, golf is a recreational pastime for white men. It's a place where they can relax, have fun, and many business deals occurred on the course. So, like the boardroom, women were excluded, as were people of color and people of less means. For the longest time, golf has been a male-only sport, and while things are changing and progress has been made, there is still room for growth, particularly with equity and pay. Since the 1950s, there's been a significant difference in the amount that male golfers are paid versus females. In 1963, former President John F. Kennedy created the Equal Pay Act, which ended discrimination in pay based on gender. In 1964, LPGA founder Marilyn Smith won back-to-back -back title holder championships. Her earnings were less than 7% of the $20,000 that Arnold Palmer won at the Masters that same year. Clearly, the Equal Pay Act didn't account for disparities in wages in the pro-golf world. In 1972, Title IX was passed, which made equal opportunities for men's and women's collegiate athletic programs. That same year, Susie Burnings won the Women's U.S. Open, and she received $6,000. Her earnings were 20% of $30,000 that Jack Nicholas won at the Men's U.S. Open that same year. In 1978, women were making 33% of what men were making. In 1986, female golfers were making 43% of what male golfers were making. Eight years ago, the men's and women's U.S. Opens were held on the same course. That same year, <laughs> Michelle Wee she received, was the winner of the Women's U.S. Open, and she received $720,000. Her earnings were only 44.4% of the $1.62 million that Martin Kamer made at the Men's U.S. Open that same year. This huge pay gap is the reason not many women are playing the sport. They may play in high school and then college, but rarely go pro because it would be a waste of their time and energy. And who blames them? I can see why many women feel excluded and underrepresented. Over these next few years, I would love to get more young women involved in this sport, but many grew up thinking it was a sport only for males. To get more girls involved, golf courses should have more golf camps for just teenage girls to go to. And also, having a female golf pro teach these camps could help the girls feel more comfortable. If more courses would hire more female golf pros, I believe the number of women would increase. Most courses have an all-male golf pro team, and this just isn't right. If they could hire at least one female golf pro, then I believe the number of women would go up. Golf courses could also host events that were catered to women. These could be events during the month of October in honor of breast cancer awareness, and also dad and daughter golf tournaments, just things like that. Something that would also help boost women in golf is more advertising for it, too. There are so many social media platforms that could post about women in golf. And so many young girls are involved in social media, they could be scrolling through their Instagram or TikTok and see a woman playing and realize it's not just for boys. Most young girls believe golf is a male-only sport because they only hear of the greats, 
like Tiger Woods, Arnold Palmer, Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy, and so on and so on. And most of you know all of these names that I just listed, but could any of you name at least one professional female golfer? Well, this is pretty true for most young girls because we aren't exposed to golf through social media or advertising. Golf has had a huge impact on my life, and I wouldn't want a young girl not to pursue her dreams because she fell out of place. Thank you.